Floyd Vasquez here backstage at the Lenzig Theater in Santa Fe, and it's another big night for AMP concerts. Big Head Todd and the Monsters. And uh, I am so pleased to say that we have with us here, it's before the show, backstage, it is uh, Todd Park Moore himself. Thank you very much for finding the time. Oh, thanks for having me. So welcome back to New Mexico and this historic theater. You know, a lot of people don't know that uh, Santa Fe was founded in the early 1600s, just steps from here around Santa Fe Plaza, and it looks like it. What goes through your mind when you come through and visit New Mexico? <laughs> Well, it's just breathtaking, the history, and, you know, I was, uh, when we were looking out, I took a walk yesterday outside my hotel room, and the trees are enormous. Um, we describe it as kind of like a, the whole town is a museum, and uh, we just love the history and, the, of course, the weather, because we're from Colorado, so it makes us feel at home, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. The landscapes, I would imagine yeah. so. Now, Matt, this is an amazing ride that you're on. When you started uh, Big Head Todd and the Monsters, my goodness, has it been just about almost 30 years ago? Yeah. At that time, did you have any idea that you would be... No, of course this not. This would be a ride that could last this long? <laughs> you live day by day in this business, so you never, I would have never thought that I would have ended up being a musician. Well, longevity of this kind is, is very, very special, and you could attribute it to your talent, to adapting with the times. Uh, how, how do you see it? How, how has it worked out this well? Um, well, a friend of mine, George Thurgood, has a sentence that you got to fight and scrap your way to the middle. You know, you can claw your way to the middle, and it's sort of like we really have to uh, have had to work hard to keep, because um, our, our business is about playing live shows and writing music, and uh, so we've just continued to focus on that, our career, and here we are. Uh, indeed, here you are. Now, I read that, uh, that Black Beehive, Beehive, which is your current record, mm -hmm. and inspired by Amy Winehouse. Uh, and uh, it, it says that this album is more personal and, uh, and kind of exploring a new realm of songwriting uh, for the band. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, actually, a lot of the songs I, I wrote in a writing exercise where I was writing a song a day and uh, performing it and posting it on YouTube every day. So it was, uh, it was really a... Uh, an interesting way to write because I think if you write very quickly and write about what's happening at the time, you know. So, anyways, when Amy Winehouse died, I wrote that song about her, and um, and many of the songs on Black Beehive were written that way. Now, and this is the uh, the Daily Donut is what it was called. Right? Well, yeah, that's sort of the idea. Yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> I mean, it was like between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, Christmas. Yeah, you were doing like a song, and there's a video as well. Right, and every single day I would do a song and a video about the day's you know events. That's remarkable, man. Talk it's about depressing, it. is what it is. <laughs> so, so it must have been to say a very productive time for you to say. Absolutely, you know, I, like I said, I, I like to to challenge myself with little writing exercises like that. All right. Now another thing that uh, must be a highlight is that uh, some very smart and adventurous people have reached out to you and really dig your music. And speaking first about uh, well, the, the NASA uh, angle, you did a, did a song uh -huh. uh, that, uh, well, there's two things. One, there's a song that's about uh, the Challenger, is that right? right. And it was Discovery, actually. The Discovery, mm -hmm. okay. And it talk, talk about that and sort of the experience of, of having people like that connect with your music. Well, it was really uh, quite a flattering experience because, first off, we're all of us are fans of the space program, and we just feel it just represents so much about uh, as far as an achievement. And um, so, to be involved in that was a big honor for us. And then we were kind of tasked with writing a song for their launches, and it ended up being um, a wake-up song, and then it ended up winning a contest for the top wake-up song. And that um, enabled us to, to perform the song to the astronauts live, you know, which was kind of a neat thing. We got to do that. So I got to go to the, in Houston, they have all of the replicas of the space station and the shuttle. And we got a secret tour of that and got to go inside those things. And it's awful small, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I think I'm cut out for that kind of work. Well, that is really wild. Yeah. You know, and another person who uh, really likes your music is Hillary Clinton. Uh -huh. uh, there was a song that's just on the, at least three great things about it. One, it's a, it's a great song, 
and it's one that you put out on uh, electronically, like on your own, right? It's kind of it's part of the uh, the new wave of publishing music and putting music on the yeah. internet. Yeah. And then Hillary Clinton used it as a campaign song, That's right. right? Talk about that a little well, bit. Well, it's the same song that we're talking about, which is yeah. Blue Sky. And um, the, I think the angle that she liked about it, because it was actually inspired by the captain who was a female. Her name's Eileen Collins. And so I think there was a feminist aspect of it that, that appealed to her also. So it was neat to, we got to meet her a couple times, so that was cool. Right on. Now, um, you know, your fans, I'm guessing that it's, it's everyone. It's young, old, it's black, it's white. Uh, it's all different kinds of people um, who all come together around music, which is well, the beautiful thing about music. When you see in the current uh, climate out there, there's so much, uh, whether it's around the election a lot, there's so much discord, like people mm -hmm. shouting and angry. Yeah. What is, what is, uh, what is, what's kind of your observation on this moment in time and, and that stuff that's out there? Well, I believe that where there's division, conflict is inevitable. That divisions are, they, they feed on each other and they cause further divisions. And um, you know, the idea that <clears throat> a divided house can't stand, I think, is a true statement. I think a, you know, if you're looking at our country or even being human beings, uh, we have to learn how to, to get together, you know, how to be united, how to take care of each other. And uh, unfortunately, we're not going in that direction. <clears throat> So that's my thoughts. Okay. And then, and, and, uh, uh, have you seen the, uh, the Oscars so bad <coughs> hashtag and all of the, uh, uh, you know, protests that are around, around yeah. the Oscars and then show business, it's a similar thing. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I think um, we're struggling with being a, an inclusive society. The idea of being a melting pot is what makes us great. We're really struggling with being a melting pot. You know, like what we're talking about, all the divisions, and um, you know, I, I think it's a good thing that that people are confronting that issue, and and I think we're probably going to see a lot more of it. I hope so, and of course, you're a, you're a pioneer in that realm too. I mean, I, in the sense that, uh, uh, well, I don't see a lot of uh, people who are uh, Asians, Americans of of you know, who are starring in TV shows sure. and things like that. And you and you have been for a long time. Uh, so you're a uh, you've uh, you've, been, you've been a trailblazer. Oh well, thanks. That's, really <laughs> oh, that's nice. Thank you. Now, is there anything that uh, that you kind of want to talk about that uh, these questions have not elicited? No, not really. I mean, I'm I'm really grateful to have uh, the work that I that I do is is so wonderful. I'm I'm thrilled to my fans for giving me a chance to do that work with my life and. I look forward to doing it for the rest of my life, at least until my hands don't work or my voice don't work. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure your fans are right back at you. Yeah. We want to cool. see you uh, forever. And uh, I want to thank you for spending time with us here. It's, uh, we're with AMP Concerts at the Santa Fe Lensing. Thank you again. All right, my pleasure.